Oxford Capital is a specialized investment manager. We operate three strategies today. We have an infrastructure business, a media business, and the venture capital business, which I run. Uh, the business is about 20 years old, so 20 years of history as Oxford Capital, and the team that I built on the venture side has about 70 years of venture capital experience, so a uh, very experienced venture capital investor in the market, investing in UK early stage technologies. We talk about investing in the best of British, so best of British technologies and typically getting involved at the seed or series A stage. Uh, so we're looking to identify companies in the UK which we believe could be world class businesses or even you know, the best in the world businesses in the sectors in which they operate. So we're looking to assemble for our investors a portfolio of 12 to 15 investments. Typically when we start investing in some of their portfolios will be invested uh, in the early stages in those businesses where they'll benefit from the low valuations. Um, but also we will balance those portfolios by investing people in follow on rounds in companies which have proven traction and where we see real progress and we can invest with, with more conviction. So we're trying to create balanced portfolios across stage um, and, and across subsectors within technology um, for investors of, as I say, 12 to 15 companies, which gives the level of diversification that we want. Well, I've been in the venture capital market for about 17 years. Um, I started with SoftBank back in 2000. Um, the venture capital market in the UK has developed you know, unbelievably over that period of time. It is almost unrecognizable now from, from what it was back then. Uh, and as I say, I put together a, a, you know, a team which between them um, have a balance of experience and 70 odd years of venture capital experience. So, so we've, you know, we've, we've done our learning and we, we, we know what we're doing. Um, and, and also, you know, Oxford Capital has this, this, this 20 years in business and we've built the origination machine you know, the, the network, the judgment, we've made the mistakes, that's important too, you know, the, the, the guide our judgment as to what to invest in. And so we now we invest with, with experience and with, with real clarity about what we think works and what doesn't, um, and with a, with a strategy which you know, is, is delivering. It's all early stage technology businesses here in the UK, and we talk about two types of situations or, or characteristics. We talk about high potential companies, and these are typically businesses which are technology led. So they may have uh, differentiated technology, they may in some cases have patents or protectable intellectual property, um, and they're typically led by technical founders. So people who are you know, developing technologies or science in some cases, which is capable of making very, very large, significant breakthroughs. And we think that, that even though there is large commercial risk on those businesses, the size of the prize merits making in those investments because of the disruptive nature of the, the company. In the portfolio, we also try to balance those high potential businesses, which obviously carry significant commercial risk, with businesses that we call early growth. So businesses that are showing the, you know, the evidence of customer acceptance of the, the product. So early evidence of product market fit, which might obviously come through sales, but equally might come through, um, through customer satisfaction scores, um, you know, particular you know, sort of client references around a product, levels of usage, those kind of things. So things that become visible earlier than, than, than revenue, where we feel that you know, there is evidence that there is a, a scalable business emerging and we can invest with, with more confidence. And we, we want both of those types of, of situation in the, in the same portfolio. Lots of ways. So we will originate probably 2,000 or more opportunities this year. We're well on track to do over 2,000. So uh, we're bringing in a lot of volume. Um, there are some basic ways which I call blocking and tackling, which everybody does. We go to conferences, we speak at conferences, we have an active PR and content strategy, all of which is designed to, 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 to bring opportunities to us. But the, the highest value parts of what we do from an origination perspective is the thematic work that we do. So themes where we have a real depth of expertise, where we are you know, positioned as, you know, as industry thought leaders, and you know, we attract the strongest deal flow in, in those areas. And then the second really high value piece is the, the network or the near network that we've built over time, people that we've worked with before, people that we've made money with, people that were, you know, where we've you know, identified that they have real potential and we, you know, we try actively to be in business with those people as much as possible and, and, and that piece has, has real value too. As I say, we think thematically, so, you know, so themes that we're active on at the moment, and this is not exhaustive, so um, digital marketplaces, digital health, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, you know, and th um, companies that fit within those themes. So Push Doctor would be one, which is now the UK's leading online marketplace for consumers to meet general practice doctors. Um, so that sort of fits within the digital health and the marketplaces theme. Um, and so the, the reason that we did that deal, that's an early growth opportunity when we first went in, the, the one thing that we could see from very early was, you know, as I say, insanely high customer satisfaction scores, even at the very, very earliest stages, customers engaging with that product abs absolutely loved the service that they were getting. And that was the indicator that we, that we saw that gave us confidence to, to, make the, to make the investment. But at the other end of the spectrum, the more technical stuff, we're investors in companies like Import.io, 
uh, like Redshift, which are applying artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques to, to significant enterprise business problems. So as I say, we're, we're looking to, to create that, that balance. Um, I should also mention that fintech's been a, a, a strong theme for us recently with investments in the likes of Moneybox, uh, which is savings and investments for the, for the millennial generation. Um, Curve more recently, which is one card for all your cards at Payments Play. And then recently we made an insurance tech investment, which we, we were announced shortly. I don't believe so. I mean, I, as I say, I've been doing this in the UK for, for 17 years, and I think the market conditions that we see now, the quality of the entrepreneurs, the quality of the ecosystem, and so the, the, uh, the quality of the investors too, generally speaking, and that's not just us, that's the market in general, is much more sophisticated now. Uh, and the UK is very good at some areas of technology. There is no better place in the world to do an artificial intelligence business than in the UK, Cambridge is the, the center of this, Bristol for robotics. Um, we have Outplay in Dundee, Dundee's a real a center of strength in gaming. So there are pockets in the UK of, uh, of real expertise in, you know, in, in strong emerging areas of technology. And technology over the last 20 years has gone from being you know, something sort of on the side of business to something which is core to the strategy of, of, uh, of every business. And I don't believe that's a bubble. I think there's a great investment opportunity here in the UK and we continue to, to mine that. We always ask ourselves whether the UK is the right place to, to build these businesses. Um, so, so if the UK is, you know, doesn't have the, the engineering or, or, you know, or, or management strength to, to build the business, we'll avoid it. Um, there are certain themes that we don't like, sectors that, we, you know, that we're avoiding right now. Um, but also we need to keep our, our, our sector view current. I mean, the market continues to evolve and we will, you know, we will evolve our, our preferences over time. So, um, so we, you know, we have a strong view about what we, what we like and we try to execute to, to, to strategy. But we're also we're looking for a set of business characteristics more than we're, you know, we're, we're trying to avoid or include certain sectors. We've exited six companies in the last two years, so it's a good track record of, um, of exiting companies in the portfolio, and some of those have been, you know, been, been very strong. So Oxitec, uh, which we sold to Intrexon a couple of years ago for $160 million, was a, was a great exit for us. It depended when people came in, because we invested through multiple rounds, but broadly speaking, between two and six times money for the investors that, that came in, obviously, and those that invested earlier you know, generated a, a higher return. So, um, so yes, we've had lots of exits. It, it is a focus within the fund. So on my team, I have uh, a gentleman called Robin Lincoln, who's our portfolio director, um, whose focus is on you know, managing exit processes, building exit plans, you know, and, and helping companies prepare for exit because it's an important part of what we do. Um, but I think it's also worth noting in terms of the sort of the features of the product that you know, we need to hold on to our best companies and build them to, to full potential. So we're not looking to, to sell our strongest companies uh, early because that's not what will make the, the overall strategy successful in, in, in terms of investment returns. So if we have good companies and they continue to grow and value continues to build, we will hold on to them until they, they maximize value and then look to, and then look to, to, to move on. Um, but equally, if we have businesses which are underperforming, we will look to, say, to, to sell them and to return capital to investors, or in those cases where things don't work, to allow them to access the loss relief, because we know that's important to our investors too. The industry average holding period for a venture capital investment is around seven years. Right? So that's sort of a, a marker in the middle. But obviously, as I say, we, we're looking to invest in, you know, in, in an individual's portfolio in some new investments. So this will be the first time we've invested. And those companies may be in the portfolio for five to seven years, even longer. Um, but also, that investor's capital will be invested in some follow-on investments. So companies that are already in the portfolio that are more progressed and further along their journey and hopefully closer to the, to the point of exit. At which they um, at which they make the investment. So um, so five to seven years is a is a good guide, but it may be shorter or longer than that. Industry average wise, I think fifty to seventy percent of companies that are invested in by venture capitalists uh, return less than less than money invested. Um, so uh, you know there the will be there will be failures in the in the portfolio, and the majority of portfolio return will come from a small number of companies that, that, that do exceptionally well. Um, and that's why we've designed the portfolios for individual investors as, you know, as, uh, you know, to include these 12 to 15 assets, because that's th what we think is the level of diversification we need to have you know, a good shot at making sure that every investor has, you know, has you know, a couple of those really good ones in their, in, in their portfolio, and therefore the overall portfolio return um, will be in line with target. We believe that technology is, for, uh, is a force for good. We, we think that, that technology is enabling significant change in society and in business. We think that the UK is a great place to be investing behind that change. And if you believe in that as well, if that resonates with you, then I would say that we would be a, a good place for you to invest. And if, you know, if, if EIS is, is you know, a, 
um, a relevant product for, for your personal financial circumstances and you know and you believe in that in that vision then we're very well positioned to, to execute on that we have the market access um, you know we have the, the the deal flow and we have the the portfolio which we continue to invest in which hopefully would would make that a success for you